Here's the backstory. I made a video about these two funny little guys here, my two Electromechanica solos. On the back of this red one is this URL. It's a marketing URL for Electromechanica to promote their solo. And on the hood of this white one right here, I've removed it since, was a phone number, which I, I think logically assumed was a marketing phone number, either for Electromechanica or the dealership that it came from. So when I made the video about these two cars, I made no attempt to hide that phone number. In several shots, it was even in plain view. Turns out, it wasn't an Electromechanica phone number. It was a phone number of some guy. Some guy who briefly owned this car before me, before Electromechanica bought it back. But they bought it back and left his phone number on it. Now this phone number was for a business, but it just went to his personal cell phone. So when the video went live, he started getting inundated with calls from people thinking this was an Easter egg or something. Nothing bad happened, but the guy was just being constantly interrupted by phone calls. And I called him myself the next day to explain the situation and apologize profusely for unwittingly sicking a bunch of random internet people on his phone number. He was a very nice guy, very understanding, and he even told me more of the history of these solos that I didn't know before. Now I'm about to do a bunch of finger pointing at YouTube, but before I do, that, let me blame myself for being such a massive idiot and not even checking that phone number once. I just ran into the assumption that it was an Electromechanica phone number or whatever, and I didn't check it one single time. YouTube has a blur adding tool. You can't edit or replace a video file after it's uploaded aside from some really basic trimming, so if you do a whoopsie like I did and leave in sensitive information like a phone number, an address, someone's face, they have a blur adding tool so you can go into the video after it's uploaded and add blurs to hide that sensitive information. As soon as I found out that that phone number belonged to a real person, which by the way I found out while I was sitting in the movie theater getting ready to watch Dune 2, I went home immediately to add blurs to the video on every instance where that phone number was visible. So I went through the whole video and wrote down on an envelope with a sharpie, because I couldn't find anything else near me, all the time codes where the phone number was visible, so that I could go into YouTube's online blur editor and add blurs over those phone numbers. The first thing you need to know about YouTube's online editor is that it is clunky. Because it's so clunky, and because I had 25 blurs to add in total, adding the blurs to the video the first time took me over an hour. And then when I hit save, it didn't work. It said there was a processing error. So I had to discard all of my changes that I'd spent over an hour working on. Then I immediately tried it again. It went a little bit quicker the second time, and it still didn't work. Gave me a processing error. Then the next day I tried it again on a different machine, in a new browser instance with cleared cache and a fresh login, and it still didn't work. So I went to YouTube Supports Live Chat, and the first thing you need to know about YouTube Supports Chat is that those people are incredibly kind and very helpful. I told the first person what was going on, there was some back and forth, and he started reprocessing something. Presumably the video, but I think he said reprocessing the editor at one point. But anyway, he said it could take up to 48 hours, and after that was done reprocessing, then I could try adding the blurs again and see if it worked. I checked in with chat support every eight hours or so to see if the video was still reprocessing so I could get to adding the blurs again as soon as possible, because this is 48 hours, that guy's phone number was just hanging out in the breeze. It ended up taking the full 48 hours to do whatever reprocessing was happening in the background, if anything was happening at all. For all I know, the support team could have got together and just set a 48 hour timer and just told me to wait. But 48 hours proved to be far too much. I couldn't stand the thought of this guy's phone number being out here in the wild for that much longer. So before the 48 hour mark, I don't remember how soon before that, I took the video to private, which was really painful to do because by that point, it was my top performing video of the last 10 and had reached 260,000 views after like three days. And I don't care if you're not impressed by those numbers, it was a big deal to me. But even though taking the video private was a painful thing to do, I saw it as my only option and it was something that I felt I had to do because I had so much anxiety over this for the few days that video was up that I could not function. Which I know is not a rational way to think, but that's not how anxiety works, is it? Truth be told, I don't know what this guy's call volume was actually like or how much it was really bothering him, but it didn't matter because I felt terrible about the mistake I had made and I was catastrophizing. And of course, after that probably arbitrary 48 hour time period elapsed, I contacted YouTube support again. I said, is the video still processing or can I add blurs now? They said, the video is done reprocessing, go ahead and add blurs it still failed. There was some back and forth with YouTube support after this, but I knew they weren't gonna be able to help me the instant I got an email from them requesting a screen recording of the whole process from fresh login to adding blurs to processing failure because I had already sent that to them the day before. Because I was using YouTube's blur adding tool so much during this whole process, I found several bugs, which I will detail later. 
But first, why are you spending all this time complaining? Just re-upload the video and move on, as I'm sure what some of you are saying. And yeah, I could just re-upload the video and move on. All the views, comments, and other engagement from the original video would be lost, and all the people that watched the original video aren't going to re-watch the re-uploaded version for no reason, so the re-uploaded version would inevitably tank, which, on the face of it, is fine. I can have a video in my back catalog with a low view count, what does it matter? Except, like most YouTubers, I'm afraid of YouTube's recommendation algorithm. What I've noticed is if you have a video that performs really well, that tends to not only prop up all the rest of the videos on your channel, but also the next videos you put out. Anecdotally, I've noticed this myself. If I put out a video and it performs really well, the next video I put out, no matter what it is, will start out performing above average. The problem is, the opposite of this also seems to be true. If I put out a video that's a real stinker, that automatically sandbags the next video I put out after that, and the next one after that. And really this makes sense. If YouTube recommends your video to a bunch of people and no one watches it, why would they recommend the next one you put out? And that's why I don't want to just re-upload the video and move on. I know no one will watch the re-upload, and I'm afraid that'll sandbag my channel. And after all, this is what I do for a living. But I am going to be re-uploading the video. I don't expect YouTube's blur tool to be fixed anytime soon or ever, and this video was a portfolio piece for me, so I want it to go back up. Now what I could do is just re-upload the video as is and tell you all to go watch it again. But that would be lame. So what I'm going to do instead is make a new version of that video. I've learned some new information since I recorded the first video, so I can add that in. I'm going to re-record several of the scenes, especially the ones with the phone number in them. I want to add some in-jokes about that phone number that will only make sense if you watch this video. I want to change some other things around and all in, make it a slightly tweaked different video. So the people that saw the original video can watch this video and play a game of Spot the Differences. You can expect the new version of that video a couple of days after this video video is released. If you didn't see the original video, well then you get a new video in a couple of days. So basically I had to take a video down because I made a whoopsie and YouTube has a broken blur tool. And to make the re-upload interesting to watch, I've made some changes to it. Now with that out of the way, I want to show you several bugs I found in YouTube's blur adding tool to draw attention to them so that YouTube hopefully, possibly, maybe fixes these bugs. First of all, welcome to YouTube's online editor. It's pretty crap, but it can do some basic things. You can trim parts out of the video. You can add blurs. You can't do both of those things at the same time. As far as I know, you can add a blur, and once the video is processed, then you can trim it, but you can't do trimming and blurring in the same go. Okay, to add a blur, I've selected the exact sh camera shot that I want to add a blur to. You can actually uh, go forward and backward individual frames one at a time using the period and comma buttons on the keyboard. Anyway, this is the start of the shot, so I'm going to hit plus on the blur, custom blur, and it defaults to track object, but I want to go to fix blur position, where it should have put the beginning of the blur at the time code, but no matter, I will copy it myself. And let's just drag it arbitrarily to somewhere on the dash here. And to select where the end of the blur goes, I select the individual frame where that shot ends, which is right here, and I go one frame past it, because the ending time code of a blur is exclusive, not inclusive. So wherever that end time code is, there is no blur. The blur goes away on the frame before that. That's not a bug, it's just the weird way that this operates. I would have expected that end time code to be inclusive. As for an actual bug, I'm not sure this next one is an actual bug. It may be behaving properly, but it's confusing and it behaves differently every time. Let me show you. When you add a blur, it defaults to track object, but when you hit fix blur position, it should put the beginning of the blur right where your playhead is, but sometimes it doesn't. Like I'll show you here and here. This may be a latency thing or whatever, it may be behaving as expected, but when you're adding 25 blurs and it doesn't always place the blur at your playhead, that's really annoying. Found another bug and I was able to reproduce it on camera. This happened multiple times and it made me totally unsure where the blur was ending or beginning. Right now, the playhead is at 21.18.18. The end time code of the blur is at 21.18.18. That blur should not be visible. If I go back, I'll go forward a frame, it disappears. If I go back a frame, it should not be there. It should be disappearing the frame before this. Now here if I go, let's just try navigating around and see if the behavior changes. And indeed the behavior changed. Now the playhead is 21, 18, 18, the same time as the end time code of the blur, and the blur is now gone. But if I go back a frame, it shows up. 
it's inconsistent. And for a while, I wasn't even sure if the blur showed up on the same frame of the last time code or not. It doesn't, or at least I think it doesn't, but YouTube's crappy online editor kept showing me sometimes that it did and other times that it did not. Okay, here's one that didn't actually happen much when I was adding blurs before, but now that I'm trying to show you bugs has happened twice. I can't select this blur to edit it. It will not let me select it. So whatever time code I selected on that is now permanent. I, I can't. It won't let me do anything. I'm glad that didn't happen while I was adding my 25 blurs, because if that would have happened, the only fix would have been to discard all of my changes and start over. Okay, look, I said I was gonna show you several bugs and I only showed you two, maybe three, but these little things, when you're adding so many blurs to a video and you have to do it repeatedly, they just make you feel like you're fighting the editing tool the whole time. But easily, the biggest bug that I encountered repeatedly is this. I've only added two blurs to this video. This is the video I was trying to add blurs to. When I hit save, it fails. Honestly, I'm happy it failed that time. If it would have saved this one time, I was going to lose my mind. And for context, I tried this in Chrome. I tried this on Firefox. I tried it on Windows. I tried it on Mac. I tried it with cleared cache. I tried it in incognito mode. I can't add a single blur to this video, no matter what I try on any machine. Not a one. Now I have been able to add some blurs to some videos. So if you're browsing my back catalog, there may be some random blurs strewn about in some videos, but it's been far more missed than hit. But the video that I actually needed to add blurs to, I couldn't add a single one. So I had to take it down. Well, maybe I didn't have to take it down. I could have let the guy continue to get phone calls, but I felt bad, so I had to take it down. I wish I had a better takeaway from this. I'm tempted to think, well, now I know I can't rely on YouTube's blur tool. But the blur tool's for mistakes, so that's like saying, well, now I know I shouldn't make mistakes. I really hope YouTube fixes this blur tool, but I don't expect them to. They have no incentive to, after all. Also, if you're new here, turkey. Turkey. Well, now you're not saying anything. There we go. All right, here's the turkey. Now, I just heard tornado sirens. Goodbye, please watch the next video. I'm gonna go put the turkey back now and then go shelter.